tonight. Many of you were here last year and know Pastor Danny Ledbetter. I love Danny. 20 years ago, well, longer than that, in the year 2000, what year is this? 2022. In the year 2000, there was a 20-year-old drug dealer that happened to be seeking God. And at Westside Free Will Baptist Church, Danny Ledbetter happened to be preaching. In January of 2000, Danny was preaching, and a sinner came to the altar. And his name's Joplin Emerson. He got saved. Amen. He got saved. Years later, God called him to start a church in Derby, Kansas. Well, God called him. Well, guess what? There's another drug dealer seeking God. <laughs> Amen. That was October 21st, 2007. This Friday is my 15 year salvation date. Uh, yeah, amen. Praise God. Through, through my pastor and my home church uh, back in Derby all those years, that's where I was introduced to Danny. You know, my first revival, I, I, uh, Joplin, I told everybody this Sunday morning, you took me to my first revival like six or eight months after I'd been saved, so it was like early 08. You took me to my first revival, and it was at Josh Bush's when they were in that, at that time in that real small church. Derek Stennett was preaching, and I, you, you introduced me to Sister Nadine Ledbetter. And with her beehive hairdo, and uh, I met her there, and and uh, yeah, that was the, God called me to preach. But over the years, uh, Joplin introduced me to Danny and them. I love Danny. I love Grant, his son Grant, the pastor at Legacy Worship Center up there in Wichita. God's got His hand on their lives. I I feel like we just have such a connecting spirit. I love you guys. You guys know that tonight, the pulpit, the stage is all yours. Love you guys. Thank you for coming. Faith ignited. Would you let uh, Would you let Danny Ledbetter and his family know how welcome they are here tonight? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Isn't it good to be in God's house? We're honored to be back here with you again. You know what, Brother Branson? He, he knows how I preach, and he called me back anyway. So that gives me much freedom when I preach. I never called to go anywhere. In all the years I've preached, I've never called to go. I said, Lord, you open the door, and I'll go. But if they call, I have the freedom to preach. Right. You know, I uh, love Brother Joplin, Brother Branson. Great. I, I, I remember years ago, <laughs> use that testimony a lot. Some of you probably heard his. My, that little beehive hairdo wearing lady was my mama, one of the finest women that ever graced this earth. And she didn't care if he had earrings, and she didn't care if he had hair hanging down his back. She told him, we'd like to have you come back, son. <laughs> and that's what a true Christian will do. It, don't, it doesn't matter what kind of sinner they are, what they look like. You look past all that and you see the need they have in their life. And they need Jesus, amen? Well, lots, lots changed since we were here last. Just uh, a couple months ago, I lost, uh, I didn't lose them. I know where they're at. But my brother, Glenn. Hey, before you get into that, can we do something real quick? Yeah. Today is somebody special's 34th birthday in this who, place. Who would that be, son? That would be the preacher man right there right in the pinstripes. There. Brother Jacob Berry, he's going to take a little circle. <laughs> he's going to turn around and take a bow. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Birthday, God bless you. Brother Jacob Berry. Nice suit. Happy birthday to you. Amen. That's worth stopping for. As I was saying, uh, my sister Betty, who's one of the greatest prayer warriors I've ever known, and she left the earth, and I wonder if we have replacements, yeah. people that are stepping in the gap, you know, to fill. Then uh, uh, also my sister-in-law, Matt, then my brother, Gary, 
and my brother Glenn, within like an eight-week period, six weeks, they all went on to glory. I really miss them. Uh, I'm going to sing a song tonight uh, that was really my brother Glenn's. He was the the old ex-bouncer in the nightclubs. He is the one that drank enough whiskey to float a battleship. I'm giving his testimony. He said, you name it, I have done it. But I was eight years old the day he walked into the West Side Free Will Baptist Church in Wichita, Kansas, of which a name is not important. I'm, I'm talking like he talked. But the word of God was preached and the spirit of God moves. That's the important thing. That when people come to the house, they feel him. It's not about us. It's about him. The Spirit of God moved that day. He saved my brother and changed his life. My brother was never unfaithful to his wife again. You're looking at a man that believes salvation still changes people's lives. He does not save you in your sin. He saves you from your sin. You say, I haven't changed, and you ain't been saved yet. Hey, you better amen me better than that. If you have not changed, you have not been saved yet. A lady asked me last night, I have a son. She said, I have a son. He served God for a year, and then he just leaves. What do you think? Here's what I said to her. He probably never was saved. Let me know. You don't fall in love with God, just fall out of love with him one day. You understand? When your life is transformed, you'll be like Peter. Lord, to whom is there to go? You hold the keys. You have the keys to eternal life. I mean, what? hey, hey, when he delivers you and sets you free, why would you want to go back into that bondage again? Well, I thank God life, it, 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 that salvation still changes lives. It changed my brothers. And this is a song that he sang, and I'm going to sing it for him. Beggar and the King. What you see before you, I've not always been. For once I was broken and battered with sin. And the story that I tell you is a marvelous thing. I love brought together. A beggar and a king. I traded for riches the rags of my soul. Listen, I gave him the pieces and he made me whole. Listen, I brought to him nothing, yet he that's good right there. He found a beggar, and I found a king. Can you say amen to that tonight? You say it's so hard for you to. All I can tell you is that I agree. Out of all the love stories this world has ever seen, there'll never be one greater than how Jesus, how he loves me. I traded for riches. The rags of my soul I brought him the pieces And he made me whole Well, I brought to him nothing Yet he gave me everything He found a beggar But I found Here stands a beggar. Now I serve the King. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Amen. That's better than some of you are looking, I'll tell you that. Some of you wouldn't get excited to see it in that swallow bella hay. Amen. People said I'd never make it. <laughs> they said I'd never see it through. They don't know what keeps you boys going. <laughs> Lord, why? I guess they never have met you. Oh, my life, it was in shambles before the day you came along. You know what he did? Turn my tears into laughter. Lord, you gave me a brand. Listen now. Uh, you gave me a smile. You touched my heart. You touched my soul. Now listen, listen. Now those bridges, it's now behind me. Lord, I burn them to the ground. I'm still holding. Hold it likely not to prosper. What's left hanging over my head. What's left hanging over my head. Listen to this right here. Listen. Oh, you'll never count for nothing. Isn't that what the old devil said? You see, I've been known to be unsettled. I'd never hang around too long Until one night I found what I was searching for And you I'm still holding on Good right here. Lord, I burn them to the ground. And I'm still holding on to the best thing I've ever found. Those bridges that's behind me. Lord. How many say amen to that tonight? <laughs> I was in a church in California. Grant, what are you going to sing next? I want to say this. It's come to my mind. I was in a church in California preaching. <laughs> we, we used to, when we was on the road, we'd film every service and every message. And, and that little beehive hairdo wearing mama had, she was an old timer. Never seen her wear a pair of pants. She wore dresses all the time. That's what I grew up on. She never wore makeup till my sisters corrupted her. 
Sorry, ladies. <laughs> you look a little better with it on. I have to. <laughs> <laughs> hey, went in this church, and uh, there's every kind of guy you could imagine there. The bird man had a bird on his shoulder. Uh, remember, babe, and and he was cooking the hamburgers. I think with that bird on his shoulder. Amen. <laughs> yeah, I came on. My, hey. That didn't bother me at all. I mean, it was a rough bunch of guys, and some of them have been saved and changed. I have no problem with that at all. God came for the sick. <laughs> yeah? He didn't come for the well. came for the sick. Well, so they, they got up with their church band, and I'm so glad you didn't do this to me tonight. Because they were having a singing, and they started singing, Go, 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 Johnny, go, go. <laughs> Johnny, be good. Johnny, be good. I mean, and then some other song like that. Branson, you and I'd have trouble if you did that to me, buddy. I want you to know that. <laughs> so the guy gets up, pastor gets up, tells about me, he says, and he says this right here. He introduces us, and he says, uh, and, and I'm thinking, I, I'm going to have to sing and minister after this? And when they had a baptism and, and they baptized one of the guys, they just went up there. They didn't know nothing. They just jerked, jerked off. It looked like Mr. Clean. I mean, muscles running everywhere. Had an earring in his ear and bald head. And, he's in, and, and, and I'm watching this. And then the one guy has hair that's up to here and it's blue. It just right up in the middle. And that's fine too, but buddy, it didn't stay there after they put him, immersed him in water. Amen. <laughs> hey, and, and, but but we're filled with all this. And, and I remember Gabriel; he was younger then. He said, "Good Lord, would you look at those pecs on that guy?" <laughs> <laughs> on the video, and I'm thinking, and, and I'm watching all this. And I'm thinking, man, what's Mama gonna think about this? <laughs> <laughs> With my hand up, you can't make stuff like that up. It happened exactly like that. So I'm going to have to get up and minister. Got up. But the preacher introduced us, and he said, he said, their southern gospel, but. I walked up there, and I said, you, you said we're southern gospel, but? Is there anything else? <laughs> That's exactly what I said. Listen to me, friend. I want to tell you something. It's not about the style of music. It's about the message in the music, and it's about the Spirit of God in it. And if you're held back by that, you're a very shallow Christian. I'm glad I could help you. I mean that. Hey, this is not my first day on the job. I've been doing this for a while to all kinds of crowds. The Holy Spirit can reach people. I don't care what they're used to and what they're not. Right. And the sad fact of the matter, sometimes you can reach the lost easier than you can the so-called Christians. Oh, yeah. Amen, Brother Ledbetter. That's good preaching. If you don't amen me, I'll get down there and amen myself. It'll take longer tonight, but I'll do it. Well, we got up and we started singing. And I promise you, and all the glory goes to God, it was different than they'd heard before. The Spirit of God started moving in the service. In a little while, I gave an altar call, and people started coming. And there was a guy come from this side with my hand towards heaven. He'd come down this aisle. He came down there. And I think I got to pray with Rudy that night. And they said he was the biggest counterfeiter in California. He had just got out of prison. And Rudy the counterfeiter got gloriously saved. One year later, I was back in California, and I was about an hour away from him. And I seen a guy woke up on the porch of a church, and he looked at me, and I thought, man, he looks familiar. He said, do you remember me? I said, Rudy? He said, I just had to drive over here and thank you for the best year of my life. That's what God does. 
That's what he said. For the best year of my life, they said he went to heaven listening to our CDs. He went on into glory. He served God. Oh, my, that's the same church where we met old uh, Anastasia. She used to be a woman of the night. She'd give her heart to the Lord and come down there. and, <laughs> huh? She brought him, but then she told the story about I was rough. I didn't know nothing. And you know what? There's a lot of people that don't know nothing. But the greatest teacher in the world, Joplin, Pastor Joplin Anderson, is the Holy Spirit because he taught you and your wife on the way home that day, and I've used that many, many times, how you couldn't live that way anymore because the Holy Spirit will reveal sin and what's right to you if you let him do that. And he still does it today. She said, I, I started praying with the women in the church. And listen, listen, I'm not making you this way it was. She said, and I didn't know. And she said, Lord, I asked you to save their blankety soul. And said, the ladies around her just. <clears throat> and she just used her little cuss words. And, but you know what? The sweetness of this story is nobody tried to hurt her and tell her she couldn't come there. One of the old sisters in the church took her aside and said, listen, Anastasia, you're a woman of God now. You're saved, and you don't use those. Hey, I said you don't use those kind of words anymore. I would say you don't use those kind. Hey, Christians need to hear this right here. You are out cussing on the job all the time and, and say, oh, glory to God. Hey, people ain't going to listen to you. So that's not hard to figure out. But you know what? They loved her. They helped her grow in the grace and the knowledge, honey, of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So I want you to know something here tonight, church. We're here to glorify his name. No other reason. We're kind of busy people. We have a ministry down in Missouri. We wanted to come last night, but things were so hectic, and there were just things we couldn't, because of other things that were going on, we couldn't come till this morning. But we're here tonight, and I asked. I was excited about coming. I told my son, I said, son, we can't take too long. I got about an hour, hour and a half message. <laughs> Look at you people. Amen. You're really glad. Hey, there you know, wasn't want too many of them laugh because they've heard you preach before. That's the deal. <laughs> you better sing, son. Man, we're honored to be in service with you tonight. I'm honored to be with Amen. my dad and my mom. Uh, this guy right here is my favorite preacher in the world. And that's saying something because I've heard him preach about four nights a week for most of my life. But he was the same thing inside the pulpit as he was outside the pulpit. And I appreciate it. I'm honored to get to hear him again tonight. But as we were listening last night to the message, how many is excited just to pull up to the king's table tonight and feast? Man, wasn't that a good message last night? It made me just love our Savior for who he is. And I, I wasn't planning on singing this song right here, but I want to sing this old song. Did I mention that I love him? thankful for that tonight and did I mention he's 
Amen. Give him praise tonight in his house. Uh, Grandma's going to sing one more. So I get started preaching, but I, I asked him before he does the end song to do this song right here. It's Emmaus, Emmaus Road, uh, the Emmaus Road. I love this song. I told him today, son, that's a special song. Listen to it. The music. Their heads were low. Their steps were slow. As they walked along that long Emmaus Road. But then a man appeared. And as he drew near, he said, oh, why are you so sad? Are things really that bad? Listen. Then they said, sir, have you not heard? You must be a stranger in our town for the one who came in the father's name he has been cut down they've laid his body in the ground oh but you listen to this right here but as they walked and talked he began to explain about my jesus and why he came, he opened the scriptures, began to teach. Listen. That preacher of preachers, the he preacher began preacher. to preach. Listen what he said. In the wilderness, the children had nothing there to eat. The manna from heaven fell down at their feet when they were dry and thirsty in a foreign land. Living water came forth out of a rock in the sand. 
When three Hebrew children were thrown in the flames, that fourth man appeared. They even called him by name. The manna, the water, the man, they're all the same. If you're still confused, let me make this real plain. Listen, it was me. It was me. You see, I'm the one you left back there at Calvary. It was me. I want you to listen to this right here and know that nothing you face in this life is too big for the God you serve. Why is that? Because who do you think hung the stars in the sky? And who do you think made the day and the night? And who made the flowers? And who made the trees? And who made the sun and the moon and the sea? And who gives life to all who believe? And who do you think made the blind to see? And who made the very air that you breathe? And who defeated death and won the victory? Thank you, Lord. It was me. It was me. Listen now. Best lines in the song. I'm the one who died for you way back at Calvary. It was me. Best lines in the song right here. Think about this. And who loved you when no one else would? And who saved you when no one else could? Oh, thank God I know. It was me. Amen. Give him praise in his house tonight. I'm going to say this real quick. I want to sing this song. Last night in the service, did, did anybody notice a, a little Vietnamese man that was sitting right over here last night? That, that guy is named Hong. He doesn't speak hardly any English. He lives in some apartments right next to my cousin Matt who is with him. Some of you know Matt here. But I had to say that this before I sing this song. Hong doesn't speak a lot of English, but Matt has kind of taken him under his wing and given him a Vietnamese Bible. He, he, he was raised Buddhist. He gave him a Bible, and Hong the other day, through in his broken English, said to him, he said, I was reading this Bible. And it said, he, he said, I was reading this Bible that you gave to me. He didn't say it that good. But he said, I came across a, a part of the Bible that said, if you believe, you shall be saved. And he's been coming to our church. He don't understand a lot of what we, we've been saying, but he understands the spirit of Almighty God. And you can look out at him on a Sunday morning in our services and he'll be sitting there going like this. He probably doesn't understand the words that are being said, but he understands the Holy Ghost of God. And when he was sitting there the other day, he said to Matt, he said, it said if you believe you'll be saved. Matt, I believe, I believe. And he said this. He said, I called my family and I said to my family, I know this, Buddha is down here, but Jesus is up here. Do doesn't that say it all right there? Buddha is down here, but Jesus is up here. Let me tell you something also. Your troubles and your trials, they are down here, but Jesus is up here. Everything that you face, the trouble you have in your home, it's down here, but Jesus is up here. He is an overcomer, and so are you through his blood. Amen. Listen to the words of this song. Oh, bless his holy name. What would you say? <laughs> We're going to let him have his way. What's the name of this song anyway? Oh, if you knew him. Think about this right here. This is why it made me think of this song. Listen to this line right here. I walked by the tomb of Buddha He's down here. I looked inside and I saw his bones. Then I traveled on to see Mohammed. 
And he was still wrapped up in all of his grave clothes. Oh, but listen. But then I journeyed to a garden where old Joseph left him lay. The righteous lamb. Listen, this is your God. God's own begotten. He was no longer in that grave. Listen. And if you knew him like I know him, you would know that he's alive. And if you felt him like I feel him, resurrection deep inside, you know he's living and death has died. Listen, if you're wondering out there in the darkness, oh, I don't you come step in the light. I love this because there are nail scarred hands reaching out to help you to pull you safe from death to life. Oh my friend I too I have stood where you stand how can I trust in a God I can't even see? But how many remember this? When I took one step in his direction, oh, then in love, Jesus, he ran to me. And you knew him like I knew know him you would know that he's alive and if you felt him like I feel him resurrection deep inside Death has died. How many is thankful tonight to know that we serve a risen Savior? All over this world, people are placing their faith, hope, and trust in gods that aren't even alive. But I'm thankful that my God, His Son, overcame death, hell, and the grave. And because He lives, I do too. Oh, and if you felt Him like I feel, Resurrection So deep inside You know he's living And death has died Death has died just continue singing we, we can we, we could God has laid his hand on us to sing too a will to be done here tonight but how many thank God of the sweet spirit that's in the place how, how many feel just that that freedom that liberty you understand that just a free liberty of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says where the Spirit is, there's liberty. 
And I didn't even, I wasn't even thinking about when I said that statement right there, but that's exactly what the Bible says. When I said there's a freedom, there's a liberty, I wasn't thinking about the scripture. And then he said, I said my word where the spirit is, there's liberty. Oh, listen, friend, I want you to know something. If you have a need in your life, if you're carrying a burden, if you're, listen, first of all, if you're not saved, is everybody in this building saved? No. Probably not. Is everybody where they ought to be with God? Absolutely not. Are we all serving God the way he deserves to be served? You know what? As you were singing one of your songs there, and it said, uh, your holy, holy is your name. Listen, there's a lot more than just his name that's holy. Some of you, you'll get, you'll get that later. God spoke that in my spirit. When I was standing right there, I looked at my wife and said, there's a lot more than just his name that's holy. His person is holy. And listen to this. And he told you and I to live holy like him. God help us preachers that are afraid to tell people that God expects you to live right. And he wants you to live holy. We all, we, if we're not careful, all we want to talk about nowadays is the grace of God and he don't expect you to live right. That's a lie from the pits of hell. He, I thank God for grace, but he does expect you to live right. I, know what, so I wasn't sure if we was done yet. Okay. You got one more you can sing? Do I need to move this closer or anything, man? Bow your heads for just a second. If you're here tonight and you don't know Jesus, and you say, preacher, I don't want to die in my sins. I don't want to miss heaven. Real quickly, I'm just going to say this. If that's you and you say, preacher, I I'm, not, I'm not sure I'm ready to meet him in peace. Pray for me. If that's you, raise your hand up real quick. You say, pray for me. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Wow. God bless you. Anybody else want to, hey, anyone here that wants to care enough about your destiny, your eternity, where you're going to spend your eternity that you want to raise your hand and say, pray for me because I am not where I need to be with God. Pray for me. Man, hands, 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 hands all over this building. Oh, God knows. Grant. Wow. Okay. Well, need I go any further? Grant, to sing another song. And you that raised your hands, I would invite you. I'm not going to come to you. And listen to me. I want to I just say, everybody look at me now. And if you're not doing it from your heart, I would advise you not to come. God showed me some things in the ministry. You can try to talk people in. I've went to a lot of people and put my hand out and say, hey, the Lord's dealing with you because I could see it. The Holy Spirit was dealing. How many know that you can see that and God will show you things? And I've seen the conviction all over them. But you know what God did one day? He showed me. He said, son, you know, and I went to somebody yesterday in church service because I felt like I needed to, to give him a warning. You know what he said to him? I said, where you at with Jesus? He did like this right here. He went, I said, are you ready to get things right? You know what I did? I turned and I walked away. Because you can't talk anybody into being a Christian. Nobody can talk you into wanting a more holy life either. That's got to come from inside you. Oh, oh God. Can I tell you that time is running out? God is part of a church that's playing church. He's tired of it. He's wanting people to come to him and fall in love with him. And if I don't get to preach this message, maybe I will tomorrow night, but I want you to know something. How many know that we're living in the last days of the last days? Now, come on, wait. No, no, seriously. I want you to think about it before you respond to me. Listen, we are living in the last days of the last days. Time is running out. There is people that will stand before God that have raised their hands and praised God and he'll say, depart from me. 
you worker of iniquity or sin, I never knew you. Now, now that, that gets us pretty solemn, doesn't it? But that's what the Bible says. Joplin, Pastor Joplin, if we preach everything about grace and everything about the goodness of God, which those are things to be preached on, but what if you forget to preach about and tell people that God expects you to live right and he expects you to live holy and he expects you to love him enough and love the truth of God's word. Right. Let me say this right here. He expects you to be so in love with him. And I told somebody just yesterday, you don't fall in love with God one day and fall out of love with him the next. Right. If you've been one of those that's in church a while, then you're out. You've never fell in love with God. Now see, it gets kind of quiet when you're preaching real preach. My daddy said when you preach the truth, sometimes it'll get quiet. Well, that's just the truth. We live in a day and time, if you preach like they'll say, you're, hey, hey, hear me. You've got to be more tolerant with people. You, you've got to be tolerant with other religions. No, I don't. You, you look at me and you listen to me real quick. There's only one way to heaven, and Jesus Christ is the way. I want to say, I'm about to take a statement to you. You will get to heaven through, through no other religion except Christianity. Now, some of you, if you're not careful, and oh, this is part, a uh, little bit of my message tonight, but man, hands have already been raised all over this building that are not ready to meet God, not living where they need to be with God. How do I go any further in this service in, in case Jesus comes back in about an hour? How do I do that? Do you believe he could? Do I believe he could? I believe he could. He's coming back. So I want you to think about this. You, you know what? Us preachers, we think we've got to fill time with words. This preacher right here is going to shut up and got to let the Holy Spirit tell you what you need to do. Now you do it or you don't do it. It's up to you. Go ahead. You raise your hands, got a need, you let the Holy Spirit tell you what you need to do. Let the Holy Spirit speak to you. Holy Ghost, you do the work. You're the only one can speak anyway. <laughs> You're the only one can speak anyway. somebody to pray with you if you need somebody to help lead you to Christ raise your hand up if you need somebody to help you pray a prayer of repentance raise your hand yes
in Jesus. By the blood of the Lamb, oh, and by the word of your testimony, you'll see the darkness go as your faith begins to grow. You're not alone, so how can you? Everything falls apart. I'm gonna preach a little. Just praise your name. I think you need to. When you have a broken heart, just raise your hands. Say, yeah. I've been a sinner For that I am ashamed But I heard that you would listen So I'm giving you my plea I'm too unworthy, Lord, to come to you Would you please come down to me I know that there are others who could offer more than I. And I promise you I'd understand if for me you had no time. I think I just hit bottom and I'm looking up to see. I'm too unworthy, Lord, to come to you. Could you please come down to me? I guess I must be reaping from the seeds that I have sown. My Lord, you owe me nothing. We haven't spoken for so long. But if you could spare some mercy, Lord, I'll pledge my life to thee. I'm too unworthy, Lord, to come to you. 
Would you please come down to me? I know that there are others who could offer more than I. And I promise you I'd understand if for me you had no time. I think I just hit bottom and I'm looking up to see. I'm too unworthy, Lord, to come to you. Would you please come down to me? I think I just hit bottom, and I'm looking up to see. I'm too unworthy, Lord, to come to you. Would you please come down? Come down to me. Pastor, with your permission, I'm going to preach a little. Now, sometimes God will take a service, but I don't feel like this service is over with. I, and listen, I don't try to, if God completes one, I don't try to get in his way. But I feel like I need to preach a little tonight. If you have your Bibles, turn into 2 Thessalonians, the second chapter. 2 Thessalonians, the second chapter. And I was going to even cut out a little bit of my reading, but I'm not going to do that. How many know the Word of God should not ever be slighted? Right. Now, I'm preaching because I feel like I need to preach a little. And I'll, I may not even preach the whole message, but I need to preach a little of the Word tonight. Can you say amen to that? Amen. If you're in 2 Thessalonians, the second chapter, say Amen. Stand to your feet for the, in honor of the reading of God's Word. Brother Joplin, I feel like God kind of spoke this to me recently. We have an American flag and a Christian flag in our church. And if I had you people stand to say the Pledge of Allegiance, you wouldn't sit there, you would stand up. But I felt like God said to me, Son, my Word is much more important than that flag. Tell your people to stand in honor of my Word. You may do that around here, but you need to think about that. We stand for a flag and set for the word. How many know there's power in the word? There's no power in a flag, but there's power in this word right here. I'm going to start reading with the first verse. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by the gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. Everybody look at me for a second. I think we're living in a time of a falling away. I believe that. Falling away from the truth of God's word. Yes, oh, let me go on. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, talking about the Antichrist, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshiped, so that he, as God said in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things, and now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of the iniquity does already work. Only he who has now, listen, now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way, and then shall the wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and wonders and with all deceivableness, deceivableness 
of unrighteousness in them that perish. Listen, because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. For this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe, listen, a lie that they all might be damned who believe not the truth. But ha listen, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Father, bless your word. God, I don't want to preach any longer. You'd have me to. But God, as I preach and warn of that last days, and this is what you've had on my heart so strongly, I ask you to use your word to speak to the hearts and lives of people. And God, I know we've already had a, a good altar service, but God, no doubt there's people, because I feel this impressment that I need to preach. So use me for your glory. If there be one here still in their seats that don't know you, draw them to yourself. In Jesus' name I pray. And everybody said, Amen. In the last days, there will come a time, listen, and I actually believe we're there. A spirit of delusion. Now, let me tell you this. Uh, a spirit of delusion is strong deception. Hear me. It's a deluded, confused mind to do things and live ways that are ungodly. How many know we're in that day? Can I tell you? We're in a day and a time where I, I thought as I was studying this message, preachers, we're in a time where people, mind, a spirit of delusion is taking them over. Little boys and little girls, a little boy is wanting to be a little girl. And, and now, come on, amen if I'm preaching right. Come on, come on, preaching. You want to talk about the days we're living in, the last days while I'm warning you, you better get ready. And you better be careful that you don't get, get turned over to that delusional mind where you don't know right from wrong anymore. And, and sometimes in the church, we think we're doing good because we are lenient with our friends and we think, well, you know, maybe uh, it's not like Pastor Branson says or Brother Ledbetter. Maybe there is other ways. I tell you, I've already said, there's only one way, there's only one truth, there's only one God, and I understand this. You better beware when you start getting lenient and tolerant with sin and thinking, well, maybe that's not so bad. We live in a day and time where, the, where people say, listen, young people, that they, that they will say to you, people have a right to love who they want to. That's a lie from the pits of hell. God made a man and God made a woman. He didn't make it any other way. And listen to me, Christians, you better get with me on this right here. And if this offends you, you better understand this, that you may be headed for a spirit of delusion where you don't even care what's right or wrong anymore. That's what he's talking about. We're in those last days and God is impressed on my heart. You've got to warn people. It's coming. It's all around us. Moms and dads are even conceding and saying, well, Maybe my little boy should be a little girl. Are you kidding me? We're living in that day. And if you stand like I'm preaching tonight, and if you take a stand, let me tell you, you know what? We got a bunch of Christians that's got a water for a backbone. About as much, I'm serious. We let our friends say anything and do anything and live any way. And we say, well, we have to, we don't want to offend anybody. Really? <laughs> yeah, I, I'm getting tired. Don't you, don't know one person in here. You keep your mouth shut and say, preacher, you can't judge him. The word of God does the judging. Shut up. Listen, we're living in a day and time where that spirit of delusion it's already started to work on our land. Listen, it, it's not coming. It's already here. In the last three years, we have seen things that we never dreamed would happen. People say, I want to be a dog. And I'm not, don't you laugh about this. Don't you laugh about this. 
I want to be a dog. And we're, hey, hey look at it. And, and we're accommodating them in the schoolhouse? You say, oh, you're just preaching. I didn't know how you would take this. I don't care how you take it. I mean this. I'll preach what God lays on my heart if you sit there and look like a little dummy sitting there looking at me. Never, hey, I'm not here for you to amen me. I'm here to please God with the preaching. Hey, you think I ain't pleasing God? You think I didn't need to preach? I needed to preach. We'll sing a while, then we'll preach a while. And don't anybody leave this building. Bouncers, get to the back door and nobody goes. Wow. The last days will be marked by a level of extreme deception. The Apostle Paul Paul calls it strong delusion. Romans said they'll be turned over. Listen, delusion. Look, Everybody look at me right here. When this happens and God turns people over to the strong delusion. look Look at me. Here's what he's saying. I'm done with you. I'm done with you. I mean, you know what? You're going to do it some of the preachers too because they won't stand for truth anymore. I'm done with you. I've tried to work with you. I've tried to get your attention. I've tried to work in your church and you let ungodly things come into my house and you teach, hey, I'm going to tell you something. You can't hardly find any preachers to listen to anymore on television. Now, I'm not saying there's not some good ones. There is some good ones. But there's some you have no business listening to anymore. I've never been a man to ever try to hurt somebody's ministry because I don't want God to have to whip me and say, you talk too much tonight, son. You shouldn't have said that. But God's revealing to me, son, there's some you're going to have to call their names out, like Joel Osteen. You have no business listening to that man. When he won't stand up and call sin, sin, and he, hey, hey, there's something wrong with a man that won't stand up and say, hey, and say, well, I think they'll all be there. Hey, listen to me. Everybody will not be with us in heaven. They've got to be saved, blood-bought, children of God to make heaven their home. I've never done stuff like that, but God's opened this up in me. I told my own church, and listen to me, there's one Lord, there's one faith, and there's one baptism. You're my family too if you're a child of God. And even after I get done preaching, you better love me or the booger man will get you. (laughs) Huh? Oh, we, we talk about one another. We lift our hands and praise God. We're not careful. We got little catty spirits in us, attitudes, unforgiveness. Let me tell you something. Before you get too heavy into praise and worship, sometime you ought to get on your face and do a little repenting. Amen. A good preaching, brother, led better. I want you to know something. God won't just God won't receive your praise and worship if it's not holy. Coming from holy vessels. I don't care if it's me. I don't care if it's you. Amos, he said, I won't receive it. <laughs> they tried to play their music in, in the fifth chapter of Amos. He said, I will not receive it because it wasn't pure and holy and right. He knew what it come. Hey, listen to me. Never let your worship become a form of godliness. Never let it just become a thing you do. Make sure it's always coming from way down deep inside of here. Amen. Make sure or it become a form of godliness. Listen, we live in a day and time, strong delusion. I'm done with you. I've tried, but you wouldn't listen. You wouldn't change. You played with me. I'm done with you. Now I'm turning you over. Now you may not like to think, hey boy, how's that go with the grace preachers nowadays? How long has it been since he's heard one of the televangelists get off their, 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 their prosperity preaching for a little while and tell people that God expects you to live right? Set apart from the world. How long has it been since you did that? We are living in the day and time when sin needs to be preached about more than ever before. Look at where we're at. Can you believe some of the things that are going on in our world are going on today? 
I mean, I thought, I, I can't believe it. I can't believe this is the same world that I was born into. I never dreamed. But listen to me. When that spirit of delusion comes, and our government and everyone will go the way and say, you better. Hey, hey let, me, let me say this while I'm here. And I'm, I haven't even got to my message yet. But let me say this, you parents, you better get a hold of the truth. What is the truth he's talking about? Let me, let, let me just give you a little of this. Uh, what is the truth that Paul speaks of? Elsewhere, uh, in the, the apostle refers to the gospel as a word of truth. Listen, I want to say something to you. The gospel is not just a general message that God loves people, but the specific message of what God did through Christ for guilty sinners. Can I get an amen? amen? That's the truth you've got to hold on to. One truth, Jesus Christ came to this earth. He bled and he died. But on the third day, he conquered death and hell and he got up out of the grave and he's alive. You've got to hold to that. Hey, if you err from that, you're in danger of being deceived. Hear me, church. Let me give you a little more. It is the word of truth, not simply a message. Listen, listen to me. Not simply a message among other messages that have some truth in it. That means that it is the truth and every other truth that claims it is a lie. How many got that right there? Every other truth that claims it, claims it outside of Jesus Christ, it's a lie. You say that's too straight. No, that's not too straight. That's not straight enough. Jesus was very narrow-minded in his preaching. He said, you got to be born again to go to heaven. Huh? He had a narrow go. <laughs> he came down. He didn't go very many places. He didn't leave, even leave his own house very far because he came down with one goal in mind, to go to a cross and willingly, willingly hang, hang between it. Listen to me. I want to say this to you. If we forget what Jesus did on the cross, our worship is very shallow. It is. I told my church this Sunday, I said, if we forget that a man hung, he bled, oh, and my daughter-in-law, Hannah, spoke at my wife's women's conference this weekend. It was tremendous, but she spoke about how they tore his flesh out to his, his back. Look at me. His back and his ribs were exposed. I preached about that cat of nine tails that had screws and rocks and glass and everything, and they would whip him and jerk huge, huge chunks of flesh out of his bone. What is he saying? What I did for you, I let them strip me naked and, and tear the skin off of my body and you will not err from that truth or I will have nothing else to do. Hey, that's what he's saying to you. You cannot err from that truth or I will have nothing else to do with you. He just spoke that in my spirit. That's it, son. They can't err from what I did on the cross. We have got to preach the blood and the cross more than we've ever preached it before. I'm serious. We have a shallow generation. Some people are praising, but you cause everybody else is praising. And they forget about a man hanging on a cross. But am, am I preaching good, church? Yeah, yeah. It might get right down where some of us live, but we forget why we're praising. What are we praising? We're praising the man that went to the cross so we could be free and, and all those beautiful words on the song. We forget about that. And that's when true worship comes out of us, when we remember the cross. Man. Oh, let me. Hey, how am I doing? Am I doing going too long? Because the people were not received the love of the truth. They're given over to believing the lie. 
Listen, now listen to me, everybody. Not just the lies of a government and a revisionist history. They are giving over to the lie. It is the same lie that Adam and Eve believed when confronted by the serpent in the Garden of Eden. He said this, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. As men and women refuse to receive the love of truth, they assume the authority to determine the standard of right and wrong. Is that all I get? How many got that right there? At least let me know you follow them. They determine, well, we have the right to set the standards of right and wrong. How many know we have no rights but to live the way he said to live? Listen, <laughs> wow. When humans assume such authority, truth becomes a lie. Right becomes wrong, and good becomes evil. Boy, oh. the people love to have it that way, and their pleasure is found in those things known as, at one time, as unrighteous and evil. That's where we're at today. Things that were unrighteous and evil, now we take pleasure in them. People, I know I'm an old fat. Sometimes I feel like a dinosaur in the pulpit. You boys ever feel that way? If you don't, you need to start preaching a little straighter. You think Jesus didn't feel that? He was the greatest preacher of the preacher of all preachers. What about the Apostle Paul? We think we're doing a good job. We, we think we found a better way to preach the gospel. Hmm. By not preaching it. Really, we think we have found a better way. Well, Lord, I'm going to take it a little different direction. Don't have to be so straight. <laughs> now, come on. That's what I'm saying. You know what you're going to do? You're going to so-called love a lot of people right into hell because you're afraid of truth. And you, there's preachers that don't love truth. They'll say they do, but they won't preach it. If you won't preach it, you don't love it. I want to say something to you. If you love the truth of God's word, you'll live by it. And you're going to be willing to die by it. Boy, I'm preaching good. God spoke this in my spirit. Tell them, if they love my truth, they'll live for it. They'll live by it. And they'll die for it. If they love my truth. God help the church and us preachers that are afraid to stand up. <laughs> I'm an evangelist tonight. Woo, glory. I get to come in here and stir up a hornet's nest. And then we'll get back in my vehicle and head for Missouri. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> I've said that for a lot of years as I was stirring the nest. Amen. Brother Branson, there's one thing I love about you. You know how I preach. And you call me. And I've come up here knowing I'd have complete freedom. And you told me that, but I already knew it. Because my spirit bears witness. Grant, we talked about our spirit bears witness. I love you, Jacob Berry. I've known that guy for a long, long time. What a fine man. Listen. Let me say it again. The people love to have it, and their pleasure is found of those things known at one time as unrighteous and evil. Can I ask you a question? Are we there? I said, are we there? Yes. That's why I tell people, you can't go home and turn your television set on after you've been up praising and worshiping God and watch garbage and filth and nudity. Yeah. Yeah. 
You say, oh, people don't preach like that anymore. Oh, yes, I do. I preach in my church all the time. Why? Because people need it all the time. Sometimes I say the same things over and over. Why? Because people need repetition. And when they get it, I'll go to something else. God, help us. I'm warning you. God sent me here. God sent me here. And I, I'm telling you, I, I told Ron, I said, I'm kind of excited about getting up there. I don't hold any revivals anymore because I have a church and I can't be gone. So he called me on a Monday and Tuesday. Somebody called the other day and I said, okay, I'll come. But on Thursday and Friday, but I get back. They said, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. He said, not Saturday because I got to get back, get ready to preach in my own church. But I'm going to go Thursday and Friday. But understand this. I'll preach to my church. You say, you're, you're an evangelist. So you can't preach to your church like you're preaching tonight. I will preach to my church, and I do preach to my church just like I'm preaching tonight. I, I want to say this. I've been in this a while. I turned 67 two days ago, and I'm still accepting gifts. <laughs> hey, hey. My... Real quickly, my shoe came apart, and I got to finish up. My shoe came apart at my women's conference. My wife, I was going up to help her get started, sing a couple songs, and I started down the side aisle, and something started flopping, Jacob. And I looked down, and my heel had just come loose from, it was just flopping. It was just like a duck going quack, 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 quack. <laughs> As I, what? I got up on stage, so I just took it off, and I showed the ladies what happened. I was coming down the aisle, I said, I said quack, quack, quack. And he's going, mm -hmm. Man. So, there was a real nice gift. They brought like a hundred gifts the women did. There was, there was a couple hundred ladies there, almost a couple hundred ladies came to that, and they brought gifts. And man, my daughter-in-law's, my wife was just awesome. And they brought a lot of nice gifts, and I seen this real nice board back there, a cutting board type thing or a serving board. And I, I held it up to Ron. I said, hey, because they had tickets. If your number's on that, you get it. And she didn't have a number. I, said, I was wanting her to get it because it was beautiful. I said, hey. And I was in the back. Nobody could see me. Yes. <laughs> so I said something about it. Next morning, I was out on the front of the church on Sunday morning. And the men were gathered around me praying over me like they always do. Every service, Sunday, Wednesday, it don't matter. And they gather around their pastor and they all lay their hands on me. And they pray heaven down. And even the young boys, I love it. And a lady come walking up and she had a real nice serving board. And she just handed it to me. I said, what? Are you kidding? And, and all the guys were watching this. <laughs> and I said, thank you. And I... I just looked it over and I said, man, I guess all I have to do is just mention something and they just get it for me. <laughs> and yeah, they got, and then next morning there was a new pair of shoes. And uh, so I said that to my men <laughs> and they prayed over me, boy. And we was heading in church and as we was walking in the door, I never looked at anybody. I said, I said, man. I really like those Henry rifles. <laughs> I, I just walked out in the church. Wasn't that good? So that Sunday after, Sunday after I got done preaching, here come three of my guys walking in with a big gun case. And I thought, oh, I felt bad. I thought, they, I was kidding. Kind of. <laughs> I said, I was kidding, but I did kind of feel guilty. And I said, did you guys go get this because of what I said? They said, no, this has been coming for three weeks, Pastor. Hand, hand made me a rifle, man. I mean, beautiful. Pulled it out, ammo. And I, I left it right there in the church because next Sunday our offering is going to be huge. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord, forgive me. It takes something to get it out of some of them. How many know that sometimes we need a little lash? A merry heart doeth good like a medicine. That's not really part of my message, but sometimes we need a little laughter. 
especially in this day and time that we live. But the seriousness of my message is please. Listen, the Bible says I beseech, and sometimes it's used like this. I beseech, it means I plead with you, I beg with you. If you're playing with God, quit your playing. Oh, let me just finish this up right here and listen. Get, get this right here. Behavior God calls an abomination becomes acceptable. So I watched a preacher the other day and they said, would you go to homosexuals' weddings? A friend, everybody look at me right now. A homosexual, that's a sin. But listen to me, so is lying. The Bible also says, now listen to me, that all liars shall have their part in a lake which burneth with fire. Now come on. Come on now. Come, come. What are you saying? I'm saying, if you're a homosexual in this building tonight, you're welcome to be here as far as I'm concerned. Because there's liars sitting here and we welcome them in. Can I get an amen? amen? Have you had them come to your church? Yeah. I have. But I don't want them to set up camp. I didn't run them off, but I still had to preach the word. Yes. And I had to preach Galatians 5, 19 and, 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 and the sins that are listed. And the Bible says, if you do these things, you shall not inherit the kingdom of heaven. Look it up for yourself. Make a note, Galatians 5, 19, and read the list. I didn't write the list, but I've got to be man enough to preach the list in the word of God. Don't you believe a lie and be deceived by a preacher or some, and I'm not talking about you, but I'm talking about others and, or a televangelist that have told you, oh, you can live that way. Listen. You cannot live wrong and die right. Did you hear me? I'm not saying that we're perfect in here and that we don't all deal with sin because we have to battle our flesh. But it's one thing to fight. Hey, hey, you know what? There needs to be in our lives a whole lot of repenting going on. Don't you believe and be deceived by a preacher that tells you you never have to repent after you get saved. You do have to repent. The Bible teaches you have to repent. You're not saved and never have to repent again. That's a lie. Hey, you hear me? You're deceiving people with that. Well, the pastors and the preachers of the land, listen, rewrite the standard of holiness to fit political correctness and tolerance of the culture. Listen, can I tell you this? The culture does not set the standard by which you live as a Christian. What does? You tell me. The Word of God, the Bible, not the culture you live in. The church can never be politically correct and be right with God. Can't do it. Cannot be politically correct and be right with God. Everybody look at me. How many like that kind of preaching? Some of you lying right now, amen. <laughs> Some of you will leave and say, I kind of had to raise my hand the way he said it. <laughs> well, God knows, and he'll hear what you say. In the midst of strong delusion, grant the church revises the character and the nature of God. Are you hearing me? Are you getting this? In the midst of strong delusion, the church revises the character and the nature of God. Pastor Joplin, that's so good. That's where we're at. The so-called church tries to revise the nature of God and his character. And now some churches will accept any kind of person and say it's okay. And they can live that way. And you know what they're going to do? 
They're going to die and go to a devil's hell. And you know what? The blood is going to be on some preachers and some churches' hands that didn't love the truth enough to tell the truth. I'm out in the country. Our church <laughs> is so far back. It's not really, but one preacher said, you're so far back in here, the sun sets between here and your mailbox. <laughs> We're not that far back. I always tell them, if you can be to Walmart in 10 minutes, you ain't too far out. <laughs> but we're out, we're kind of out in sticks. But Brother Jason, you've been there. God's building the church. <laughs> Saving souls. Delivering people from all kinds of things. <laughs> I got old Jack and Erica, drug addicts all their life, lost all their children. But just recently they came in and God saved them and delivered them. And now he texts me all the time and tells me how he loves me. And now they sit in our new believers class and I teach them. <laughs> And they've got their children back and they're free from their drugs. But you know what? They had already got them back. But you know what? He came in the other night to our service on Wednesday. I think it was Wednesday night. And Jack said, the drink has really been pulling at me. He stood up and gave this testimony. He said, the way he said it, babe, he's a strong drink. The devil's really been fighting me with that. You know what our church did? Right then, I said, some of you men get back there and you lay your hands on him. And he was back there and they laid their hands and we prayed and I went back and I laid my hands on him and I commanded the devil in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the son of the living God, to get that demonic power of strong drink to leave him. Do you think we have that authority? If we're living right? Listen to me. If we're living right, we have that authority. There was a woman following Paul around one day, and he got weary of it. She had a spirit of divin a spirit of uh, uh, of in infirmity. That means a disabling spirit. There's a lot of people have a disabling spirit. Say amen if you understand what I'm saying. I think she was crippled, but there's a lot of people who are crippled in other ways. Paul got tired of it and he turned around and buddy, I can see his eyes. I bet he had fiery eyes. He said, you devil, you, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ, you come out of her. And what the devil do? Stay there? No, it had to leave because there is power in the name of Jesus. Now, wait a minute, don't play around with that. You can't be living like the devil and have the power of God in you. Amen. How many glad I got to preach? <laughs> Amen. In the midst of this strong delusion, the church revises the character and the nature of God and say his love and grace excuses unrighteous behavior. That's a lie. His love and grace does not. Now he'll forgive you, but he don't want you to continue. Hey, you know, some people say what he said to the woman that day, he said, that, well, neither do I condemn thee. And they'll stop right there and say, see, we can't. But I heard a preacher when a guy did that on national television, he said, the Bible said, Jesus said this, neither do I condemn you. But when it come that other guy's time, he said, hey, brother, I want to tell you something. It said, neither do I condemn you, but you stop too soon. Go and sin no more. That's what the word of God says. We want to stop just short of the full truth of the word of God. Hmm. They have fallen into the error when they say these things of Psalms 50, 21, you thought I was altogether like you. Do you see this very condition flooding into the church of America? 
we live in the very condition that I have described here tonight. Can I get an amen? amen. Oh, I got a lot more, but I'm going to stop right there. Boy, but I can take a little more of it. Amen. amen. But you got to know who you're working with nowadays. People that have microwaves and they like everything quick and short. Not you people here, but other places where I go. <laughs> huh? It is 8.56. Oh, we have almost been in church two hours. <laughs> Some of you, you're going to get on your phone and say, can you believe we had church for two hours? Oh. Hey, hey, wait a minute. But your basketball game goes into overtime and you never complain about it. And this has been a lot better than a basketball game. You received the word. Oh man, so much. And I may continue this on tomorrow night. Would that be all right? Got more. I got some things with my daughter-in-law, Hannah. What are you doing? You having a Bible study while I'm preaching? Oh, okay. Don't keep your head down too long or think you're on your phone. Amen. <laughs> I just said that for your benefit. <laughs> no Googling. No messaging while I'm preaching. Amen. Can I ask you this question? Do you love the truth? You better. It's a warning. God's put it on my heart. I'm not done preaching this message. If God opens doors, I'll preach it in my church, and I'm not done with it in my own church. But it's a warning in the last days, warning in the Word of God. And God's told this preacher, you better tell people. It's coming. It's already there. That's, that spirit of delusion is in the world today. People doing crazy things. And then other people accepting it. What you would think was sane people. Uh -uh, I'll tell you something. I've said this for quite a while. We're losing our mind in America. Not just America, but the world. But America, we're losing our mind. Our spiritual senses are gone. In God we trust. How shallow is that? In God we trust. There was a time when even... Even unsaved people, just good moral men, they knew enough to say, that's all a bunk, that's not right, you can't live like that. Even unsaved people! But now, you better hear what I'm saying. I'm not just preaching a message for you to get out here and forget it. Take it in your house. I don't want to come up here and you not be different when I leave. Brother Branson, I mean that. I want this to help you and help your church. So God can send a, a spirit of almighty God on the church and where the sinners cannot sit in the congregation of the righteous and, and they'll walk in the doors and, and they don't know what it is, but they won't even stop at the pew. They'll come to the altar because there's such a power of God moving in the house. Understand this. We can have that kind of revival again if we'll get back to serving God like he deserves to be served and like he tells us to serve him. Oh, I was reading the other day, honey, of one of the revivals. And the guy said, what was his name? I was listening to him. He said, spirit moved so strong in the area where he was that I forget how many people had lined up at the police house. Duncan Campbell. So many people had lined up and they were there to turn themselves in for things they had done because the Holy Spirit had got on them so strong that they couldn't live with themselves. And some of them didn't even know what it was. He said they was at a dance. Oh, moms and dads, don't you know enough to keep your children out of that kind of stuff? <laughs> You're right here in the end. I'm going to ruin a good message because I'm going to get right down where you are. What, are you kidding me? Don't take a holy God into places where he's not comfortable because he won't go very long. 
Oh, hey, that'll quite some of us, won't it? Said there was a secular dance going on. What else do you call it? Secular music. Even the nods are letting up on me now. I know what I'm talking about. Our God's a holy God every place and all the time. Young people, you have no business going into those things and doing those things where all that ugly godliness is going on. Well, if we're going to tell them that, we ought not be doing it either. And not, hey, some of your parents are setting your children up for failure because we let them taste a little bit of the world and we don't have enough in us to stand for truth. Boy, I am preaching good right here in the end. <laughs> huh? We don't have enough in us to stand for the truth down the line. My sons have never graced a prom. They've never been to a dance. Why? Because they never questioned me on it. We weren't going to do that. We weren't going to go into ungodly music and them sit around that. Hey, am I preaching good or what? Some of you say, no, you're meddling now. Well, take it like you want to. I don't even know why I'm saying this or who it's for. But I got three sons that are serving God. Two of them's preaching the gospel and one of them's getting ready to. Amen. 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 Hey, I I don't say that. The anointed gospel. How many know there's a difference? How many know what the anointing is? One man said to this old boy, Jacob, he'd he'd pray because this young man who'd been in seminary he would, went to this church where they wanted a pastor and they were considering him. And there was this old fellow in the church that, that could pray heaven down and help him preach better. And every time he got ready to preach, he'd say, Brother, would you stand up and pray with me? And that guy would stand up and he said, Oh, God, oh, Lord, would you let, uh, let the unction from heaven fall on this young preacher today? Oh, God, that unction is the anointing and the power of the Holy Ghost. And he prayed every time. And that young man, uh, one day he said, man, I just preached like a house on fire, but I didn't know what that meant. So I went to him. He said, sir, would you tell me what that means when you say let the unction fall on me? Can you explain it to me? And that man looked at him. He said, uh, no, son, I can't really explain it, but I can tell when you ain't got it. Hey, preachers, we need the unction from heaven. I don't want to preach without it. I don't. Do I very often? No. I don't. And I want to give God praise for that. He helps me. He fills my mouth and my mind. And some of you think, yeah, he fills your mouth way too much. But hear me. Young people, adults, it's time to shun the very appearance of evil. Don't, take, don't set your children up for failure. Make no provision for your flesh. That means this. Don't set yourself up for failure. Don't set your children up for failure. They say this. A preacher that I respect said, our young people that go through high school and they go off to a secular college, 4% are returning to the church. 4%. You're doing pretty good with the young people here. Here's the problem. you got to retain them. It takes more than trips to Joyland or to Worlds of Fun or whatever you got nowadays. It takes more than that. Joplin, it takes the power of the Holy Spirit to get down on their hearts or we'll lose them to the world too. How many don't want to lose them to the world? Okay, I'm done. Bow your heads, close your eyes for just a moment. I'll I'll do it again. I'll do it again. Once again, is there anybody here that I ask you the same question that does not know you're right with God and you're ready to meet Him in peace? If that's you, I want to just ask you to do this. Get up out of your seat and come down here so we can pray with you. I'm going to give you just a moment. I know many hands were raised earlier and most of you came. Now, the rest of you look at me. Preacher, I do not want to be deceived. 
Preacher, I do not want to be deceived in these last days. I want to know what it is to love truth, the truth of God's word above everything else. If that's you, I want you to get up and come and talk to God about that right now. And then, Pastor, it'll be yours when they get done. I want to love truth. If you want that, come and pray about that right now. Come on, church. Love truth above everything else. Lord, grant me peace. God, help us to love truth. Oh, 
Sing it to him. How I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Sing this real quick. To me, he is so wonderful. To me, he is so wonderful. To me, he is so wonderful. Because he first loved me. Give him praise tonight. 